We continue our TypeScript fundamental series and in this video we will go over string and number types in a little more details. We will see how to use string literals for type annotations. We will learn about union types and type aliases. We will go over to our TS config file to explore no emit on error option in order to handle our authoring time errors. We are back in our sample application and in order to start applying type annotations and using other features of TypeScript language, we have to do one more change. In previous video, we have converted our project to TypeScript by initiating a new TypeScript project with TSC init command, but it is not enough to start to start using TypeScript specific syntax. To fix that, all we're gonna do we will rename our source file and we will change this extension to TS. Cool. Let's see if everything is still working. We will start our TypeScript compiler in watch mode. We'll try to save the file. TypeScript compiler is running and we are getting compiled version of our source file. In case you would like to get a source code of our project, you can go to the following link github.com slash oleg conic slash rainbow I will post this link in the description of this video and here when you get to the github repository you will see different branches and uh, using branches you can get into different stages of our project like this HTML to TS is the current one you will see the source file with app.ts code, just the same stuff that we have seen just a moment ago. We have seen some type annotations in the very first video and now we are going to go into a little more details about string and number types in context of our application. So what we have here, we have our two files opened, so we have app.ts uh, right here on the left and we have transpiled version of this TypeScript file on the right. So we'll close this thing for now and we will be running our TypeScript compiler in watch mode so we can see how our compiled file is getting changed. So in order to use some typings let's do a little bit of refactoring. We will move some variables outside of our functions and just for the demo purposes we will be doing those global variables here. So we will define variable element ID. Another one will be a style name. The third one will be for interval. So let's see which values we're gonna assign to that. So we have this element ID right here which is rainbow, the HTML ID. So we'll assign it to the first variable and we will use the variable name in its place. We'll do the same things for the style name, the CSS property right here. And the last one will be interval, this 1500s right here, 1500 millis milliseconds. And we will use once again variable here. So if we hover over our variables right here, we will see that we are getting some, some type inference. We see that element ID is indeed a string and interval is a number. Uh, so this type inference is based on the initial assignment of the variable, which is very useful because we don't actually have to do anything. Let's see how our uh, transpiled file is getting changed. All the difference is that we don't have let keyword, but it got replaced with var keyword. And the only reason for that is uh, we have ES5 as our target in our TS config file. Uh, another option of explicitly stating the types for a variable will be to put some type annotations. So in this case it will be a string, the same thing for style name, and as you would guess for interval it would be a number. So in this, in this case it's a little overkill to do this in such a small application, but when we have more complex scenarios it is very useful to explicitly put type annotations. One of the benefits is uh, 
we are getting kind of a docu documentation for our code so it is easier for other people to figure out what we were trying to do the interesting fact is that here on the right we can see that those type annotations that we had on have on the left they never get into the javascript file itself so it is authoring time value only so let's see what will happen if we are trying to override our variables with defined types somewhere somewhere later in our code so let's see for some reason we are changing the value of element id variable and we are assigning the number to it we will get this underlined variable name right here and very straightforward error message that type number one to three is not assignable to type string and the same thing is for interval which was defined as a number at the very top of our file if we put some letters here we will get very similar warning so you can imagine if your application is big and you are importing and exporting a lot of uh, modules it is very possible that you can lose track of which value should be assigned to a variable so in big projects again types they become very handy so we understood that we have some keyword reserved for our type annotations such as string number boolean and much more as we will see soon another useful feature is that we can actually use the string literals for uh, our type annotations so let's say we have a use case where we want element id to be only rainbow we can do the following and if somewhere further in our code we will we will change the rainbow id to let's say to rainbow underscore one we will see that it's complaining right here because we have specifically stated in this type annotation that it has to be rainbow string literal so basically what we are achieving here is constant declaration so let's see if we actually put constant here as our keyword and we will remove this type annotation and hover over we will see that it's actually doing this it's putting the rainbow string literal as type annotation automatically for us so this is the way how we can use string literals for our type annotations we will see more real life examples a little later when we will be working with union types and type aliases let's go back to our type annotations and just in a second we will see what union type is and just for the cleanup purposes we will change the annotation of element id back to a string but now we will play around with style name let's put string literal as type annotation but let's say we want not only border color to be a valid style name but also background color so what, what we can do for this we can use this pipe symbol to create a union type and here we're gonna put background color as our second option so now if we want to change the signed value to background color it's still gonna be valid we don't see any errors but at the same time if we assign value other than border border color or background color we will probably see an error we see this variable name underlined and it's saying that type color is not assignable to type with this string annotation so this is a very handy way to specify several options for our string literal type annotation we can do more of those so it's not limited to two we can do as many as we want but as you see it can get pretty messy right here this type annotation gets really large so this type annotation becomes a great candidate for refactoring so let's do just that we will use keyword type so keyword type is provided to us by TypeScript, not JavaScript. This is the way to specify type alias. So what we're gonna do, we will copy this value. We will call our type as valid style name. And just similarly as for variable assignment, 
we will just assign this value right here and now we can use this name let's put it uppercase and now we can use it instead of this string right here we can double check that it references our string literal annotation by alias name if we change it to something different we see the error again you can of course export this type alias so we can use it in other places in our code as you might notice right here we are getting this warning but at the same time if we take a look on the right hand side right here our style name variable in our actual JavaScript is still getting assignment of color which is not the right type so we even have this warning here so even though we have warnings that does not stop our compiler to actually process the code and put the output with their own assignment in order to prevent that if for some reason we want we don't want this behavior we want TypeScript compiler to stop on error we have an option in our TS config file with name now emit on error. By default, it's set to false, but now we will set it to true. Let's put the proper assignment here to start with. Okay, good. So we don't have any warnings and we have a proper assigning right here of border color, which we expect. But if we change it back to the bad assignment of just color and save it, we see right here that we are getting warning in our terminal and we are getting this underline here. But our compiled file was not changed. We did not get the bad assignment right here. Okay, let's fix our code quickly. We will remove this export statement here because it's not gonna work right now anyway and we will change the style name to a proper value of background color we will save it our output javascript was updated with this value let's go to our application and see what is happening here okay now we see this weird looking rainbow with the background color changing not the border color even though it is weird but that's exactly what we wanted Let's go over what we have learned in this video. At the beginning we have seen how to use string and number types in the context of our application. We also seen how to use string literals for type annotations and how union types and type aliases can make our code cleaner. We also seen the no emit on error option in TS config file in order to stop compiler outputting JavaScript in case we have an error. Please subscribe and I will talk to you soon.